Howdy, I'm Ben Solak, week 11's in the books. Welcome to the play sheet. The opening script, Matt Canada's been fired. The Steelers are six and four and also terrible. The fan base has been frustrated with offensive coordinator Matt Canada since the beginning of like last season and this year's been no different. In fact, the Matt Canada frustration has boiled over to the team where a kicker Chris Boswell was caught saying to Matt Canada after Canada celebrated a win. <laughs> And then this past Sunday, when the Steelers lost to the Browns, scoring only 10 points on offense, running back Najee Harris had some pretty pointed comments about the state of the team relative to their record. Me can do two things. You can look at the record and say, okay, well, we're still good right now. But look at the record and be like, if we keep playing this type of football, how long is that shit gonna last? Right. I look at it like, how long is that shit gonna last? Now, the team's frustration with the poor offensive performance under Canada boiled over to the point where earlier on Tuesday this week, Matt Canada was fired mid-season, which like, even for as bad as the offense has been, is shocking. The Steelers haven't fired a coach mid-season since 1941, which was 82 years ago. That was, World War II was going on. The fact that the Steelers fired a coach midseason when they never, ever, ever do this is a really important point because it emphasizes that it's not just about the offensive performance, not just about the fact that the offense wasn't working that well, but critically, it's about the fact that the locker room is being lost. Like Players like Najee Harris are getting openly and clearly frustrated, vocally frustrated with the state of the offense. That, the, the, the cohesiveness of the locker room is why Canada had to leave midseason. Now, we can't go to play action to like look at private, team meetings and locker room conversations and all that internal frustration in Pittsburgh. We can go to play action to look at the Steelers offense on film, what Canada was trying to do, why it wasn't working and what needs to change for the Steelers moving forward. So let's go to play action. All right, so Canada's entire offensive philosophy is around like pre-snap motions and shifts. And anybody who's watched a lot of football knows this is a good thing, right? Like broadcasts highlight it all the time. It's a man zone indicator for quarterbacks and the Shanahan offense, the Mike McDaniel offense, they run out of tons of motions, gotta be good, right? Well, it it's good when utilized. It's good when intentionally deployed to achieve something. With Canada, it's just kind of spammed. And when, when it's spammed, it doesn't end up helping like at all. Okay, so here's a first and 10 run. Steelers come out, they got a three receiver set over to the, to, to the side of the formation, right? So three receivers over here. Pickett gets under center, uh, and then he kills the call, right? He, he cans the call. So they had two calls in the huddle, and we're getting to the second call. Yeah, under center, we're going to send now Allen Robinson to motion, right? We always come with, with this jet motion. This is a ton of plays for Canada. What the Steelers are running is basically they're going to run power, right? So you're going to get a double team here on the three tech, work up to the linebacker. Tight end's gonna be here on this defensive end. Ideally, this defensive end's out here, right? You block him here, and then this is the alleyway that you hit, but that's not the case. The defensive end is reduced, he's inside. So tight end's gonna take the defensive end here, push him this way, double team working to this linebacker. And then Isaac Sayamalo is our puller, and he's gonna come here for, for, for this, this corner, right? And we like this look. This is a good look for single back power. But because we have this jet motion, we're now bringing this additional player, right? So what ends up happening is Robinson adds into the blocking scheme on power. Like if, imagine if there were a fullback right here in front of Najee Harris. You would go double team this linebacker and you would block here and then the fullback would lead and Isaac Samala would pull and this now would be your alley, right? You, you would run behind these two pullers. Well, we don't, we don't have a, a fullback. We have single back here, but we're gonna bring Allen Robinson in motion. And we're gonna add him to the blocking scheme as the fullback, right? When you run this, Right, he now becomes a point of attack blocker, which you've now got to a play where Allen Robinson in jet motion is your primary point of attack blocker on a run. Like that's just bad process. You don't you you don't want to end up there. It's not good to end up there. So this is where we end up. So when we run this, we go okay. Darnell Washington into the reduced defensive end. Here's our double team. But the problem is Jeremiah Wusu Koromoa. Nobody can get up, this double team can't get up to the linebacker here because this reduced end just crashes down on this. Here comes uh, the safety running with the motion. Here's the corner on the outside. And so they the, the Browns just have, they have three second level defenders for two blockers. And one of those blockers is a wide receiver. One of those blockers is Allen Robinson. And so this gets met in the hole, right? This is not a successful, well-blocked run blocking play. Najee does a good job escaping JOK. And then he's big and he rumbles for a little bit and it's a five yard gain, but that, that process right there, that run, I don't think is good process. That's part one. 
So now later in the game, guess where we are? We're, we're under center on second and 10. We have a three receiver set over here, and then we're in single back. Najee Harris, here's the tight end. Guess what Kenny Pickett's gonna do a line of scrimmage? He's gonna kill the call, get to the second call. Guess who's gonna come in jet motion? Allen Robinson. It's the, it's the same play, right? And so Canada does this a lot. Canada will run the same play multiple times in a game. And that's, that's fine. Other coordinators do that. They're usually more successful with the plays that they spam than the Steelers are, but okay, so you, you, you're spamming a play. This time, because the end is outside, right? We're gonna get this kick out here from Darnell Washington. Here's our double team, right? Working up to Jeremiah Wusukoromoa. We're gonna pull Isaac Sayamalo. And Allen Robinson's gonna be another lead blocker, the point of attack, right? He's gonna bring this player with him in jet motion. And he's gonna be our, our first guy through the hole on power. So, all right, snap the football. Well, double team loses again, right? I mean, the, the Browns know this is coming. And because double team loses again, we have Jeremiah Usukoromo just running free into the gap, right? And so we can fail. He can hit on Isaac Sayamalu. And now it's the corner with a free look at Najee Harris. Now, in general, we say, if you can get your back one-on-one -on -one with a corner in the running game, you'll like that matchup. That's generally good process because the back's gonna beat the corner. However, this corner starts the play inside about four yards off the ball, right? It's not like you're getting to him way outside on the boundary. It's not like you're getting to him where he's he, he's he's in, in cloud support. He's coming from depth. He's already in the box. Like he's already looking for this particular run. He's not at all threatened by Allen Robinson here working to the flat, more on that later. And so he just, Denzel Ward just stays in the hole, stays in the hole. Jeremiah Sakura Moa slows Najee Harris down. This is messy. And then you get off the block from Darnell Washington here and it's a two yard gain. So we come back to the same play and we're still working with Allen Robinson as a point of attack blocker. Jeremiah Sakura Moa is not losing to this double team. This is, this look is not working for us. So why do you call that run twice back to back when it's not even like design wise a, a great run in my opinion? Well, it's because you want to get to a play action play, right? It's because you want to get to a play action look off of that run and presumably generate a chunk gain, right? That's what play action is for. Fake the defense out, run play action, get a big gain in the passing game, especially when your drop back game isn't working. So you go jet motion with Allen Robinson, right? What we're trying to sell. So we're trying to sell the idea of, okay, here comes Isaac Samala with the pole and we're going to block with the tight end here. And then right, he's going to head up and block and then we're going to go power. That's the idea we're trying to sell. What do they actually do? Snap the football. And Robinson keeps moving on jet motion and runs to the flat, right? Now, in the previous runs, what we saw is we saw this corner, Greg Newsom low, right? He was the player, Denzel Ward, I circled him last time, that corner who was forced to tackle one-on-one -on -one with Harris, but he was in the box. He was already present, right? He was previously here. And what we want to do is we want him to think this block's coming so that he steps down, he's worried about this, and then bang, we beat him to the flat quick, we throw this ball, we turn up the field. That's what we want. Pre-snap. When they send Robinson, look what doesn't happen. The motion man doesn't come with him, right? Robinson's coming, the motion man's not coming. So this is not man coverage for the defensive call, this is zone coverage. And so right now at this point, Pickett should understand, I'm not going to get the same look here that I got in the previous two plays that I wanted to have. And so when Robinson runs this to the flat, Newsom is not at all, not remotely, fearful of a block here. He is not moving inside. He's not moving down the field. He is not in any way, shape or form out leveraged on this route. So you put your, you put your back to him, play action fake, but right here, like this is a open throw, but Newsom is in position to immediately make a tackle here. You did not get the look that you wanted to throw this. That's number one. Number two, Play action is not worth it if you're gonna throw a ball one yard past line of scrimmage. The idea, the point of play action is to get down the field, right? Other offenses, when they run play action, run it to manipulate the middle of the field, to pull these linebackers down and then throw to this intermediate area. There is no offense in the league who throws outside of the numbers more than the Steelers do. But the Steelers also get, they run the ball more when they're under center than almost any team in the league. Like the only team that runs the ball more in the under center is the Eagles, which is because of the QB sneak. Like the, no team lines up like this as often as the Steelers do to run the ball. So when you finally call play action, they pass like 20% of their under center dropbacks. When you finally call play action, why are you calling it to get here? Call it to get here. Do something, but make an explosive play. So look, 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 like they, you're trying to manipulate this corner to get to this route. That's that's what this play is designed to do, which, okay, big catch and run, nice, whatever. Imagine if you were thinking about 
manipulating these linebackers, right? And this is, this is a safety here, I understand, but functionally he's a linebacker. You hand this ball off, all linebackers gotta step up, we gotta, we gotta be ready for the pullers, here we go. And it turns out it's a play action fake, and you run this. They, they, the Niners run this a b billion times. This is like this is called strike. It's called drift. This is the most popular thing in the world. Every offense runs this. Run this route. In, in, in fact, if we watch Darnell Washington here, who like kind of olays, right? The safety thing is going to be a block. He kind of slips him and works up, up field. Throw that. Throw that because if this corner overreacts to the flat here, which you can see like he's going to have to do, right? Right when you land right here, way to beat. You're not under pressure, way to be. Like obviously you have a free rusher coming, but you have a second. And if this corner gets low, throw this, which I don't even love that. I love this, <laughs> run that. And you see like they do run in breakers here to the top and there's a dropping defensive end that muddies the read a little bit. But in general, if you, instead of doing a little switch release up here and then having Deontay Johnson kind of jog this route out and George Pickens jog this route out. If you just put receiver right there and have Pickens run three, five steps and bang, hit him right here and have him run for a touchdown. It's what every other offense in the league does. I don't understand how we're gonna spend so many resources to run, have a, like a mid running game from under center. And when we finally go play action, this is the best we're getting out of it. That's infuriating, dude. In general, this offense does a lot to set up a little. Right, it sacrifices a ton with like the use of pre-snap motion and putting players in like positions that they're not going to be super successful in, to then set up plays that don't actually have like a ton of, of juice. Like there's not a lot of a lot of return on the investment. That in, it, in itself is fundamentally flawed. The other problem is when you when you do all of that, you become extremely predictable because you you only have like a few key changeups you're trying to get to, a few big moments, like a oh, big, big symbol crash, huge crescendos. And other than that, you're just in like textbook stuff. And we can find examples of that too. Third and four, third quarter, uh, Steelers are gonna run a concept called Hank. Everybody loves Hank. Nobody maybe likes Hank more than Matt Canada does. Hank is curl and a flat. It's an outside curl and a flat. And then we're gonna get the middle set on the inside here from the tight end, okay? And what, what we got high-low stretch, high-low stretch, and then we have the ability to throw this if these linebackers widen out, right? So that'd be like, a, a, we get to the middle sit later in the down as we watch what those linebackers do. Now, pre-snap, the, the Browns initially look like they're too high. And then if you're watching, you see, okay, like this, this safety's coming low. He's communicating with, with these corners out here. Looks like they might be giving us some sort of three, right? They might be giving us uh, rotate a single high. So we're gonna get a single high safety. And then he could be bailing back. He could be bailing back, potentially cover three. And we like this running back route against this linebacker in cover three because the, the linebacker is going to be buzzing to the curl and then to the flat. He's got to get through all this trash from these two players. And so we potentially like the back here, snap the football. This is not single high. This is going to be too high, right? This safety stays outside. And then we're going to see this corner actually sinks. And then it's going to be this corner to the flat and this corner stays in the flat. So because the corner hangs in the flat, this linebacker is going right to the curl. He's going to take away this outside route from the receiver. And the, the corner is just sitting in the flat waiting for Nashi Harris, right? Like if you if you watch how his body is positioned, he's connected to the receiver, but he's never taking away anything besides this flat route. So he's the the, the Brown said, if you're gonna run Hank all the time, we're just gonna trap Hank to the back. Like if, if you're gonna run Hank constantly and throw it to the back, because Pickett loves to throw to the back, we're gonna leave this corner in the flat and we're gonna be ready for that throw. Bang, fourth down. Now, why, why was that so easy? Well, because here in week one, three by one set back to the one receiver side, Steer snap the football. This is Hank. Curl, curl, flat, flat, middle sit. We just pick it, go with the ball. Goes to the back. All right. Week two against the Cleveland Browns. This isn't exactly Hank. They're going to be in two by two. They're going to move Najee Harris out, right? But we get still this swing pattern. Curl here, curl here. It's the same functional spacing. Ball's out to the back. All right. Week four against the Texans. Not Hank at all this time, but still three by one back here to the single receiver side. We're gonna get here, that traffic and congestion that we wanted to get as this linebacker goes to get connected to the back. So, all right, snap the football. There's our congestion, there's our upfield release. Ball's right out to the back. You're gonna keep doing this and doing this, man. They're gonna know. They're neat against the Ravens, three by one. I don't even wanna draw the concept for you. I mean, like, they're gonna get this stretch right here. And, and the three receiver side, they like blow eggs. They get something that looks like this, which I don't think is real. Like, I don't even think this concept of fear is correct because they're badly coached. But what does Pickett want? I mean, just, it's just 
Pickens upfield, and it's the back to the flat. This is third and eight, right? And it's just immediately ball out, line of scrimmage, make Jalen Warren solve a problem for us. So if you're going to throw this constantly, they're going to get on it. Now, as we transition to talking about what has to like change for the Steelers offense moving forward, I want to bring up just one more example of Matt Canada's passing offense being not super well designed, but then show how like it's not 100% on him. Second and five, we're gonna motion Najee Harris out of the backfield, put him in a little like tight end spot. The motion doesn't really tell us anything. Motion, whatever. They're just getting him in a position to chip. He's gonna chip and release to the flat. Tight end here is gonna release to the flat. What they're gonna do is they're gonna get this long vertical route here from George Pickens. Actually ends up breaking back to the sideline. And then we're gonna get deep crossers from these two receivers. When I say deep crossers, I mean deep crossers. The problem with the depth of these crossers, look at those boys fly down the field, is that Pickett is at the back of his drop back now, which I don't like. Maybe he they, this is a three step drop. Maybe it should be five. Like I don't know why it with the with the depth of these routes, it feels like this should be a five step drop. He should be stopping here because when he lands on his back foot, you should be ready to throw to your first read, and you can't throw either of these routes right now because they're just pulling coverage towards one another. Right? This is not viable. So okay, so Pickett maybe the drop back is wrong. Whatever. Now we get to the point where he resets in the pocket. You'd like to be able to throw Deontay Johnson right here. That's what you want. And there's a there's a window to throw this ball. There is. Firstly, Pickens needs to be pulling this defensive back. He needs to be down the field design-wise. You want to get this guy out of the pictures. That's number one. Then you're worried about this linebacker right here. And you're also worried about this corner a little bit. The problem is that because Najee Harris chipped and then just released to the flat, and we have just this tight end out here to the flat, and because this other deep cross going this way, nobody is tying down these zone defenders, right? Watch just these linebackers. See how they can just freely drop and drop and drop and drop and just get underneath this throwing window. If you want to open an intermediate window, remember we said like, you should be trying to throw to the middle of the field. That's an important area of the field. You need to get Harris right here and turn him down and basically tell this linebacker, hey, if you keep sinking, I'm going to throw this for a six yard gain, maybe an eight yard gain, maybe a first down. You, you, you have to punish him for sinking all the way and show him that you will throw this underneath such that he has to stay upfield and then you can throw this over the top to Deontay Johnson. Design wise, you have to move these defenders and they just don't. And, and, and this route is a waste. It doesn't help. Like, like imagine if we bring this thing all the way back, imagine if this route stopped right here. Right, if, that, if, that, if that's all he ran, and then you ran this crosser, and then you ran him down the field. Just sit him right there. You would inherently pull this player forward. And now you can throw this, maybe even on a three-step drop. But design-wise, this isn't going to open a window for you. You're not moving defenders in coverage. Now, here we are on the fourth quarter, all right? We are in the red zone for the first time today. It is a three-point game. With, with with everything the Steelers offense has been all season and to this point, you can win the game right here, right? Like, and, and Matt Cannon's probably keeping his job if they do. What concept do we have? Well, well, well. We're going to motion Najee Harris into a chipping position out of empty. Guess what we're running, baby? I mean, it is the same concept. We're going to go chip to the flat, chip to the flat. This time from Pickens, it's going to be a post, which is important. And then we're going to get deep crosser and deep crosser. And Deontay Johnson is the one that I want. That's that's the player I want open on, the, on this concept. All right, snap the football. This time it's not zone, it's man, right? They're not zoned, they're manned, and, and, we, and we get a rush package. What that means is, firstly, we should not be looking at George Pickens right now. I have no idea why Pickett opens to this route. We have a post safety and man coverage inside leverage, inside leverage. Post is not opening, not any day of the week, never on a Sunday, man. I mean, I don't know why we're looking at it, but we are. If we're looking initially to this side of the field, here's the post, when we see it's not open, let your eyes fall off the post and get to the crosser. Just, it's, it's not, it come, that's, that's why you build the concept this way. I'm looking at the post, why, I don't know, but we're looking at it, and then the crosser's gonna come into my view from across the field, so just stay there. But if we watch Pickett in the pocket, he brings his eyes back to the middle of the field, looking at these two crossers, which right now this is a mess to understand, right? Because of all the different bodies that are moving. And accordingly, when Deontay Johnson opens on a bust, he's not there for it. You should have your eyes the whole time. You should be, if you're looking at this, you should be then ready to throw Deontay Johnson into this window and he just skips it. I have no idea why. And what's frustrating is this time because of the blitz, because of the man coverage, immediately at the snap, linebacker gets wide, and there's nobody else middle of the field. We should know right at the snap 
that this ball is going to Deontay Johnson. This ball is going to the crosser. It is the ideal crosser look. The first play, not a good crosser look because we're not moving the zone defenders. This is the crosser look. This is where you throw this. Why are we looking at the post? And how are we possibly not getting to this route, man? He's running away from man coverage. This should be, uh, even if they don't bust, this should be a potential catch at the sticks. We should be inside the 10. And so for everything that Canada is, design-wise and repeating the same plays and not understanding the intentionality of the motion and the play action, you still get to this point where you can actually win the game. And your quarterback just does not know how to read this concept out. It's bad coaching. It's also a bad play by the quarterback. So if the Steelers are going to improve as they move on from Matt Canada and they kind of approach more of a like, platoon sort of offensive coordinator approach, I have no idea what's going on there. There's a lot of like easy fixes. The miscommunications between Pickett and Deontay Johnson, which were like all over the Browns film, that can be solved in one week. You just gotta get the guys on the same page. The screen calls that like, they're good at some screens, but they're really bad at others. You gotta decide what you know how to block, what you don't, and only call the good stuff. You gotta cut the chaff away, right? So there's easy stuff to fix. There is, however, also just like issues with the quarterback. Pickett has just not been good this season. And you can blame his stunted development 100% on Canada if you want. I don't think that's completely accurate, but you can. Just by removing the guy doesn't change the fact that the quarterback is here now. He's had this stunted development. He is this very uncertain, unsure passer who regularly makes the wrong reads and freaks out in the pocket. He doesn't have elite physical tools to cover for all of that. Even if you fix the off of the coordinator deal, Pickett still has a long way to go. He has a long hole to climb out of, and you're not gonna just do that overnight. So is the Steelers offense gonna like jump into the top five tomorrow just because they finally got rid of Canada? No, I think it's going to get better. I think it can get to league average because they have two above average wide receivers. They probably have two above average running backs. They have a decent tight end room and an average offensive line. They have enough talent in place to be an average offense. And right now with the way their defense plays and the way they're coached, that should be enough to make the AFC playoffs. Long term, they need a solution for Kenny Pickett. They need a new offensive coordinator, a new offensive system that can really help out this young passer. That 2024 problem for 2023, this should help the Steelers offense, should keep them in the AFC playoff race. And that'll do it for us on this episode of the Play Sheet. Sorry I got fired up. I don't like bad offense, drives me nuts. But thank you for watching. Thank you to Corey McConnell for producing today's episode. Thanksgiving is this week. And so have a good one of those. Enjoy that and subscribe to the shows.